Happy New Year! Shh. Make ornaments. I didn't do anything. My own. Countdown boxes. So just get right into things. Hi, I am Nikki Clements, and I used to make stuff like this. Lisa had asked me to make a plaque for a leader in her falconry organization. Simple enough, I thought. Famous last words. Strike one, sub-zero temperatures. For Christmas, Lisa got me a box of wood, a great gift idea, and one we were both excited about. From the Amazon listing, it looked like a cool variety. Cherry, walnut, even some purple heart. What arrived was... Firewood, for lack of a better term. We were both pretty disappointed. But there were a few scraps in there that seemed plaque-worthy. I did a few tests, and I figured I would either use my laser or do a tattoo transfer. They were both good choices, so the first step was to clean up the board. That's a little high. To start, I ran it through my planer to remove the test transfers as well as all the measurements that were written on it. Seriously, these weren't just cutoffs. Someone just dumped their trash into a box and sold it. Then to the table saw to square up the edges. Quick sand on the belt sander. Wrong. And you have yourself a halfway decent piece of wood. Now, what turns a rectangular block of wood into a plaque? A routered edge, of course. Now I have very little experience with routers. I didn't use it much in my shop class, which was over a decade ago anyway. I've used my dad's a few times, but that was when he was there to help. I have my little Dremel router, but that is a lot less intimidating. But this router has been in my shop for over a year, and I haven't even turned it on yet, so it's about time. First I had to install the bit, brand new as well. So I removed the router from the table and fumbled my way through installing it. This router has a spring pin, like the Dremel, so you don't need two wrenches to tighten it, which is cool. And that might be standard now, but I always remembered needing two wrenches to tighten on the bits. Anyway, I got the bit installed, put it back into the table, and turned it on. It was slow to start, most likely due to the extreme cold, but it got up to speed quickly enough. I ran a few scrap boards through it to introduce myself. It seemed to work well enough. So I tried it on my main board. Things were going okay, but then the bit started to move. Obviously, I didn't tighten it enough, so I took it out, retightened it, chopped off the messed up edge of the board, and then tried again. It didn't take too long to get some confidence. It's a fairly simple tool, but it can do some massive damage if something goes wrong. I was pretty pleased with the routing job. Routing? Router? Router job? But I realized I did it on what I wanted to be the back. The current back side was the better side. So I chopped off all the routing I just did, making the board even smaller, and routed it again. It came out good, but it was much smaller than I was planning on it being. 
So I went back to the trash box and grabbed another board that I thought could work. I think it's just a thick chunk of pine or something. I don't really know my woods very well, but I gave it the same treatment as the other board. Planed it down. Squared off the edges and gave it a quick sand. With confidence this time, I proceeded to router the edge. It went well and the board looked good. It was an interesting piece for sure. I think it was pretty saturated with sap. I mean, it wasn't sticky, but it seemed damp without being wet. It was kind of waxy. Anyway, with two decent plaque blanks, we decided to just make two plaques. Taking the bird that Lisa had on her original design and just making that a separate plaque. It then made sense to do the big one in black and white with the laser and then do the bird in full color with the transfer. Let's do the laser first, because lasers are cool. You've seen my laser a few times briefly. I'll probably do a more in-depth video on it at some point, but it's called an X-Plotter and I got it by backing their Kickstarter. And it's pretty challenging to use, the software on it is in no way intuitive. It's pretty dangerous as it's completely open frame. A future project is to make an enclosure with ventilation. But with enough patience, you can get it to do laser stuff, and at a fraction of the cost of something like a Glowforge. One big challenge is lasering something in a specific spot and at a specific size. I mean, even these $50 engravers that have a laser bed the size of a postage stamp will trace your design at low power so you can position your item. This thing, not so much. So my current workaround involves lasering a general area on some cardboard and then placing the main piece and then putting some white paper on top of it and then running the laser really fast and trying to get an idea of where it's going to be and eh, it eventually works. But with everything set up and the design traced properly, it's uh, laser time. It's laser time! As you can see, it did an okay job, but it definitely has some issues. The lighter areas with more sap possibly didn't burn well. I could have tried another pass at a lower speed, but I decided to just sand it off and try again. You can see here just how quickly the sandpaper gets dunked up with the sap residue. After sanding, I thought I might get a better result if I stained it first. The darker wood might cause less reflection. But also, lasering the stain probably isn't a great idea either or the shellac. But safety to the wind, I lasered it again at a lower speed. And it came out pretty good. I could have done another pass even slower, but it was good enough. On to plaque two. This one should be super easy compared to the laser. To start, I put some painter's tape on the edges. Black will be going all the way to the edge, but I don't want it on the routered part. I think trying to cut the transfer to the exact size and then getting it placed perfectly would be pretty hard to impossible. So this seemed like the better method.
printing out the transfer. Now, one drawback to tattoo transfers is that they are a bit pricey. Therefore, you don't want to waste any of the sheet. So if your design doesn't fill a full page, you want to fill it with other projects or just anything over nothing, completely wasting the extra. So I just filled up the extra space with some NDC logos. Applying the adhesive and cutting out the main transfer. Peeling away the plastic and sticking it on the wood. Getting it pressed down nice and flat. Applying some water. Peeling away the paper. That's pretty satisfying. Now to carefully cut away the flashing. And just look at that peel. That is an awesome result. With the painter's tape off, it looks really good. And that was super easy. A little too easy, wasn't it? Yeah, that was attempt two. The first one, I didn't remember my idea to mask the edges with painter's tape. I tried sanding it off, which was promising at first. But then the main piece scratched. So I just tried again. But it's okay, as the final result was awesome. I applied a coat of shellac as soon as it was dry from the water to protect the transfer. One last thing to do, apply a way to hang it. I first put on some foam pads to protect the wall. And then I'm just using some standard sawtooth hangers for the hardware. No keyhole fasteners today. Keyhole fasteners. I mark their location and then I drill a pilot hole. I actually have a cool magnetic nail holder somewhere, but a pair of pliers works. Pound in the nail with a tack hammer. Repeat for the bigger one. And adding a David Arts logo. So this was a great little project, more complicated than I had intended, but I got a lot out of it. I got more acquainted with my router, I got more practice with my laser, and I discovered how well painter's tape works for masking tattoo transfers, in sub-zero temperatures no less, with no frostbite.